In the chaos of COVID, abandoning the office to work from home has become the norm for many Australians. Of course, the intention has been to keep us safe, but it hasn't been so for everyone. In some cases, lockdowns have turned homes into prisons, which in turn has made escape from abusive relationships virtually impossible. Now, though, the outcome of a legal battle that actually began long before COVID could change all the rules about working from home. It's a decision putting bosses on notice that they need to look after their workers no matter where they're working. It's a routine repeated in millions of Australian homes every morning. 24-year-old Delia Fernandez is getting ready for work. But putting on her makeup is no everyday task. She needs to take extra care to hide an ugly truth. This beautiful young woman is the victim of terrible abuse, inflicted, she says, by the man she loved. I would have died for that man. We were very, very in love. I could not even believe he did it. I couldn't believe it. What did you recognise as domestic violence? For me, if I were to sum it up, I would put it down to maybe a 40 or 50 year old man coming home after work, the old fashioned way, beating his wife and kids. This is what Delia Fernandez works so hard to conceal. The damage from a collision of events that up until a few months ago, she could never have imagined. Domestic violence triggered by the COVID lockdown. He was clearing the dining table, he had a glass in his hand, and he turned around and he fly pegged a drinking glass at my face. And that was it. Delia, that is so awful. There was a lot of a lead up and possessiveness and obsession and the drinking glass that he threw at my face, close range. Oh. We've got the same set here. This is the exact glass. And I, I needed emergency facial surgery. It's courageous to talk publicly about such a dark subject. But Delia wants other victims of so-called COVID violence to know they're not suffering alone. Do you think the lockdown measures in place because of the pandemic exacerbated the situation, made your experience worse? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, yes. He was obsessed with COVID as well, which was very strange at the time. He'd put on like, you know, the live news updates. Shutters are down, the doors are closed, hundreds of thousands of workers forced to stay home. Babe, come watch this quick, like, look what's happening. We're not, we're not leaving the house. We're not, we're, not, we're stocking up on tuna and rice. We know during COVID-19 there's been an increase in first-time violence. Sadly, COVID-19 has meant Patty Kinnisley, the CEO of Family Violence Prevention Network, Our Watch, has never been so busy. Frontline workers are telling us that there's an increase in intensity and rate of violence against women at the moment. We're also hearing that, that um, COVID is being weaponised in a range of ways. So saying to women that they can't go out because they'll catch it or they're not allowed to go out is also part of that isolation. Before COVID, the figures were already staggering in Australia. Every two minutes, police were being called to an incident of family violence. And on average, one woman a week was being killed by a current or former partner. Lockdowns and working from home made things worse giving perpetrators an almost free run at their victims. Greater access and greater control. So uh, women are really losing their independence over that period of time and uh, perpetrators can exert greater control and, and diminish their ability to seek help and support as they're with them 24 hours a day, keeping an eye on their movements and their phones. And so during COVID-19, that's been amplified. Regrettably, one example is what Delia Fernandez has endured. But her ordeal began so differently. Two years ago, she thought she'd met the man of her dreams, Julian Sebastio. I really could not fault him at the start. He ticked all the boxes and he was kind and yeah, I just thought I'd found my soulmate and I thought I'd finally found my place in the world. This is all gonna be sorted out. Young love is often impetuous. And soon enough, the couple moved into an apartment together. Wow, babe, you look so nice. It was chosen because it was close to Delia's work. 
As it turns out, it was far too close. Scaring everyone. Oh shit, sorry. <laughs> I was excited and I was like, oh my god, my boyfriend's visiting me. Oh, he's sending me flowers. Oh, he's doing this. And everyone was like, Dills, your boyfriend is absolutely like he's he he's, he might as well work here. They had a running joke, you know? You feed, babe. Mmm. Whilst everyone and myself included thought that was so romantic, um, that he would bring me lunch and stuff, even though we woke up together and we went to sleep together, we had breakfast and dinner together, now he's bringing me lunch too. Uh, I thought I was just the most special lady in the world. But I also realised that that was stopping me from socialising with my work friends. So what seemed at the time to be a loving, committed relationship, you now interpret as controlling and possessive behaviour? I would have probably never never ever while I was whilst I was in that bubble thought of it like that because I didn't know that I was being controlled How's that gonna help? but then COVID hit Delia was forced to work from home like many others she found the new normal tough going she says in their small apartment her boyfriend Julian Sebastio made lockdown feel more like locked in his work was reducing. So he was at home a lot more and I was working from home. But because it was a studio apartment, it was literally four walls. Work and home became the same place. I was right there always, 24 seven. I was isolated with him. You just become like a caged animal sometimes. This man had become a monster. Yeah, the man that I laid my head next to every night for a, well, over a year at that point, that I loved with all my heart. I think there are opportunities for um, domestic violence to occur that perhaps didn't exist so readily in the past because people are locked down. Chief Magistrate Lisa Hannan says the lengthy COVID lockdown Victoria endured last year means her courts are being inundated with domestic violence cases. Thank you, Mr Registrar. Call the next matter, please. Are we seeing a greater number of incidents of domestic violence because of the economic pressures that people are under, because of the financial strain, you know, so many losing their jobs? What I'm being told by the magistrates who are hearing these matters every day, the pressure cooker environment of those combination of factors is certainly contributing to applications before the court. The COVID-19 pandemic has directly led to more women experiencing domestic violence. The Australian Institute of Criminology surveyed 15,000 women in the first three months of the coronavirus outbreak. They found that of those who reported physical violence, a third said it had happened for the first time. I think the rise in terms of first-time family violence seems to be significant. And that has implications because the people who have no experience with the court and its processes or indeed with services and their processes are likely to be finding it more difficult to access those services um, in a lockdown situation. He just clicked and he jumped on top of me. I couldn't believe that my life was just absolutely flipped in, in, in the blink of an eye. Delia Fernandez still can't make sense of what happened the night the man she thought of as her soulmate hurled a glass at her. Oh my God. But her humiliation didn't end with it smashing into her face. He was screaming and he was freaking out. That is when I really thought it was my life was over because I knew that he was now in self-preservation mode. He did not care about my well-being. I couldn't even walk like I, I was trying to crawl to a mirror to see the damage and he ripped me back by the legs and told me if I had tried to look in the mirror again, like that was it. And he turned every mirror in our apartment around face down or face the wall. And he said that I was not allowed to look into the mirror. And I knew then how horrific the injury must have been. With deep cuts to her cheek and glass fragments in her left eye, Delia couldn't stop the bleeding. When she was eventually taken to hospital, she was rushed into emergency surgery. I was not only mortified by what happened, but I was also grieving. I lost my whole life that night. I lost everything. I lost my normal way of life and I was defeated. The cruel irony of Australia's fight against COVID-19 
is that while most of us have at times been forced to work from home to keep the community safe, some of our most vulnerable have never been in more danger. 24-year-old Delia Fernandez has the scars to prove it. The biggest problem started after work from home had begun. I had nowhere to go. It was literally like I slept in one place, I ate in another, and I cooked in another, and I worked in another, and it was all within the same four walls. At the height of the coronavirus lockdown last year, Delia and her partner Julian Sebastio's studio apartment was both their home and office. But confinement in such a tiny space was disastrous. Sebastio's already controlling behaviour took a violent turn when he hurled a glass straight at her face. And then you look at it and you're like, but why? Like, why did I have to be permanently and viciously scarred like this? I can't escape it. I can't wake up and pretend it's not there. Because it's there, right there, for me to see. The attack on Delia ended up in court, where on December 18th, her now ex-partner pleaded guilty to common assault and reckless grievous bodily harm. He was sentenced to a 15-month intensive correction order, meaning at least 12 months in home detention. But cases like this now have other implications too, especially for bosses who ask their employees to work from home. They're being held responsible for the safety of their staff, no matter where the worker is when they're doing their job. Look, there she is, she's grandma. And it's all because of a shocking case of domestic abuse that happened 11 years ago, long before anyone had ever heard of COVID-19. I was at school. I remember sitting out there at the time, feeling really ill, like something wasn't right, and uh, they end up catching the bus home. It was the 16th of June 2010, and tragically, the then 16-year-old Liam Carroll's instincts were spot on. His mother, Michelle, who'd been working from home, had been killed by her de facto partner, Stephen Hill. I walked into their bedroom, the master bedroom, and I saw mum on, in the ensuite on the ground, and then him beside her passed out. Um, and, uh, like, I was kind of in a freak at the time. No, ma, mum. So I'd realised that she'd passed. It all started so innocently in 2004, when single mum Michelle met and fell in love with Stephen, a financial advisor. It wasn't long before they were living and working together. I was 10 years old, yeah. I was pretty happy, fine with the situation. And things were fine for a fair while. But things changed when Michelle and Stephen decided to run their finance business out of their basement at home. There was no escaping the long hours and the stresses of the job, which seemed to fuel a violent streak in Stephen Hill. For Michelle, home became prison. She just was this mentally drained thrall, I guess you could say. Like, the stuff that just abuse and, like, just mind games and picking can cause is, uh, yeah, pretty full on, eh? So it's not as though work was restricted to a nine till five schedule? Yeah, like, sometimes I wouldn't see mum come up from work till like eight o'clock at night. There was office work everywhere. Like, you know, there were people's files all along the like dining room area. There were files in the kitchen. There were files in their bedroom. And when home and the office are the same place, finding any reprieve is near impossible. It all just becomes the same thing. Your house your, is your office, your office is your house. Complicating the pressures on Michelle and Stephen's professional relationship, their personal lives were also changing. They had a child on the way. It was far from a joyous time, and just weeks after giving birth to another son, Stephen killed Michelle while they were both working from home. 16-year-old Liam and his baby brother Charlie lost everything. Oh, Liam, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was definitely heartbreaking. I was shattered for a long time. I didn't sleep for a long time. Well, not properly, anyway.
It was always going to be a difficult case. Uh, I wanted to help. Because Michelle died as she was working from home, lawyer John Ryan had the unusual and untested idea of pursuing a workers' compensation claim on behalf of the orphaned brothers. And so began an extraordinary battle. Well, there's two hurdles that you need to establish, and, and that's first that the uh, injury or accident, or death in this case, happened in the course of employment. And the second part is that it's, that employment has to be a, a substantial contributing factor. Getting the case to court was an ordeal in itself. It took years. But then John faced what many legal experts thought was impossible, proving Michelle's death was work-related. He asked Liam to testify. So that's where Liam's evidence had to come in. He was saying, yeah, absolutely, she was working at seven in the morning, if needs be, if a phone call came in. She would be on the phone in the kitchen, she would be on the phone in the bedroom, she'd be working in the bedroom, she'd be working all over the house, um, and she'd be working even weekends. The court was satisfied that, uh, at the very least, she was on call. The court case and multiple appeals took four long years. But eventually, in March last year, Liam and his brother Charlie won. They were awarded a $450,000 payout, money they desperately needed. But the victory also set a groundbreaking precedent and is a warning for all employers who want their staff to work from home. I think they'll realise that if an employee is working from home, that um, their obligation to ask that broad question about is it safe for you to work from home. Sarah McCann Bartlett is the CEO of the Australian Human Resources Institute. Yeah, because once upon a time, domestic violence wasn't really a conversation many people would have with their employers. Is the tide turning a little bit? I think the tide is turning, and we're now trying to normalise those conversations around domestic violence, particularly when it's a working from home situation. So I think employers definitely need to be held accountable to, hey, are you safe working at home? Is everything good? Are, you know, people aren't always truthful and definitely scared people. One's if you had a really good worker and they end up dying one day. Back in Sydney, Delia Fernandez is getting her groove back. Morning. Hey, beautiful. How are you today? Good, good. How are you? She says she is now in control of her life and is using a strength she didn't know she had to help others who find themselves in a similar position. Yeah, for sure. Just hearing all the stories, like it is overwhelming, but it brings me peace because I feel like no good is going to come from this situation besides that part. Do you feel like your old self now? I mean, you were robbed of who you were. Do you feel like you're Delia again? You know, I've got my puppy and I've got, I'm living with a girlfriend and, and we've got, our, I feel like I've got my life back here, yeah, the old me where I see my friends and, there's a lot of trauma that came along with it, but it was almost like a blessing in disguise because I'm free now. If this story has raised issues and you need to speak with someone, there is support and counselling available by calling 1800 RESPECT, which is 1800 737 732. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.